Um, here's the deal. We are constantly, as the secretaries know, moving people in and out of detention. Uh, these are uh, 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 immigrants who, uh, illegal immigrants, uh, who for one reason or another uh, are judged better in detention than, um, than under some alternative. Um, with sequester looming and the end of uh, this continuing resolution in a couple of weeks, it's like the perfect storm. Uh, we really are ha have to manage so many different things because we don't have a budget. Um, but uh, the normal ebb and flow uh, accounted for many of those releases. And these are people who are removed or they were bonded out or their, their status was changed or for whatever reason. Um, I think, however, for sequester, Getting ahead of that looming deadline, uh, career officials made the decision that there were some very, uh, what I would call very low-level, low-risk detainees that could be put into a supervised release program, and that's what happened. And we're going to continue to do that, recognizing you, the secretaries will really understand the rock and a hard place analogy. On the one hand, Congress says you have to maintain 34,000 beds, and on the other hand, they say, uh, and we're not going to give you uh, really the money with which to do that. And they don't also give you any flexibility to move money, say, from another account with which to handle that. So we are going to manage our way through this by identifying the lowest risk detainees and putting them into some kind of alternative to release. But this Can is I, related it, to sequester or it's not? Uh, several hundred are related to sequester, but it wasn't thousands. And it's going to continue? Uh, I, for the foreseeable future, yes. Let me, let me just make an observation here in, with, with enormous respect to the political environment within which we work. You've had three secretaries that had to do triage because Congress cannot find a way to create an immigration policy, just not the southern border, but a broad-based immigration policy for the United States of America. So we get sidelined, well, did you release 2,000, didn't you release 2,000, what about this, what about that? Secretary Chertoff and President Bush tried to do it. Right now there appears to be a bipartisan coalition around the notion of immigration reform, but let's, let's be very, very clear. The job of the Secretary of Homeland Security with regard to securing the borders would be a heck of a lot easier if the United States Congress would forget about the partisanship and come up with a broad-based, comprehensive immigration plan. Story ends right there. Right. Secretary. Ditto. <laughs> Absolutely. Secretary Chertoff, you were President Bush's point person on immigration along with Secretary, Secretary Gutierrez. You were on the Hill for all the key meetings. You were at the White House getting your marching order. That was the last uh, time there was a big effort made on immigration. Now we're getting into a new push on it. What was learned from <clears throat> your experience? Uh, well, I, I think a couple things were learned. And first thing I ought to say, and this is to follow up on, I think, on the point Tom made, um, and I used to struggle with this. I know Janet struggles with this. Uh, there's a resistance sometimes to recognizing that things have actually gotten better. Now, I'm not going to tell you that we have a perfectly secure border or that you could have one. But if you look at a, a series of different metrics, over the period of, of the last 10 years, there's been a steady improvement in terms of operational control of the border and in terms of the net inflow and outflow. And we've invested an awful lot in this, and obviously we need to continue that. But never to acknowledge progress is really self-defeating. So that's the first thing. I would say the main lesson is this, and I think it's reflected in, in the discussions we've seen this year. There are three major pillars to immigration reform, and they're each important, and they each have constituencies. One is uh, making people confident there will be continued enforcement and security and that it won't simply go away once you have uh, some kind of an amnesty. And that's the lesson of 86. The second is the business community has real needs, not just for high tech, but for less skilled workers to do work that Americans will not do. And the reality is, you know, I, people used to say, well, you know, you have all these agricultural workers coming in. I never have met a person who said to their graduating high school senior, I want you to be a lettuce picker when you grow up. The fact of the matter is, Americans don't want to do that. And then the third piece is you do have to have a resolution for the people here illegally who have otherwise been law-abiding that will give them some path to straightening themselves out with the law and then having a, a more sustainable situation where they're actually able to contribute to this country. If you get those and if you make achieving each of those goals a priority, not trading them off, then I think you get reform. Secretary Chertoff, let's talk mechanics. What are the mechanics of moving something on the Hill where you couldn't? 
All right. Well, I think that what happened in, in our uh, period of time was, first, as I said, the president was somewhat late in his term, so his ability to move Congress was diminished. Here, of course, we have President Obama starting his second term. Second, um, I, although we had a really broad agreement, including uh, everybody from Ted Kennedy or over to John Kyle, uh, the time between getting the agreement and getting to the floor really allowed a lot of erosion from both the right and the left in terms of people who didn't like the plan. You've got to move it quickly. And the third thing is I think you do have to send the message that things have improved and you do have to put facts out there so people understand that while it's not time to say we've accomplished border security, you've got to recognize there's been a lot of progress and that's got to be part of the message.